So the Ahsoka show is only a very short time away and I know that a lot of you will not have seen the hundreds of hours of TV, books and comics that fill in Ahsoka's backstory before and after her Mandalorian appearance. Ahsoka's story is a key part in not only the fall of Anakin Skywalker, but also the galaxy as a whole, going from Jedi, to street urchin, to rebel, to something far greater. So we're going to dive deep into Ahsoka's story in the Star Wars canon, going all the way from her birth to her possible transcendence. With this, you're going to find out everything you need to know about her before her live action series begins. Hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. Part 1, The Birth of Ahsoka and Her Discovery by Master Plo Koon. Ahsoka's life begins out in the Outer Rim world of Shili, where she is born to a loving Togruta mother and father. She is soon discovered to be force sensitive, but nothing much comes of it for a long time. She remains on the planet like any other child of her species would. But then, on one dark and gloomy day, a Jedi from the Zygerian species named Latrans shows up and offers to bring Ahsoka to the Jedi Temple back on Coruscant. Her parents and the rest of her Togruta village are extremely happy and begin to celebrate the occasion, preparing to send Ahsoka off for a new life. Latrans then takes Ahsoka into her arms and begins travelling back to her ship, but Ahsoka was quickly able to sense that something was eerily off about this master. Latrans was no Jedi, but instead a bounty hunter hoping to capture Ahsoka and bring her into the Zygerian slave trade. Having felt this disturbance, Ahsoka runs for her life and uses a very similar ability to Grogu in The Mandalorian to call out to a real Jedi to come and rescue her. Either way, her force call actually works and Jedi Master Plo Koon soon arrives on Shili to attempt to save the young Togruta from the clutches of the evil Zygerian slavers. Now at this point, Ahsoka had to make a very difficult decision. She had to choose to trust either the scary, masked face of Plo Koon or the beautiful face of Latrans. Thankfully, Ahsoka chooses Plo Koon, teaching her the very valuable lesson, never judge a book by its cover. Part 2, Ahsoka's initiation and apprenticeship in the Jedi Order. This is where Ahsoka's story begins for many people. Ahsoka's introduction in the Clone Wars movie of 2008. Here she begins as a snappy little Padawan with no respect for her masters and no restraint in battle. Obi-Wan Kenobi believes initially that she is supposed to be his Padawan, but Yoda confirms that no, Ahsoka will train under Anakin. And despite not seeming like it, this was the best possible choice for her. Now this is actually crazy to think about because Attack of the Clones takes place only about a month or two before the movie. The impatient, arrogant and feisty young Anakin is hoisted with a huge responsibility, a student of his own. It is also here where Ahsoka meets Captain Rex for the first time, beginning their long and prosperous friendship. This leads into Ahsoka's first major responsibility at the Battle of Ryloth, where she is given her first squadron command of the Clone Wars. During the battle, she was lured deep into a Separatist trap and refused to retreat despite Anakin ordering her to multiple times, leading to a wipeout of a significant number of her men, causing Ahsoka great pain. She eventually conquers her sorrow for this event and successfully leads a second battle group shortly after, teaching her an extremely valuable lesson about listening to the more wise. Sometime later, Ahsoka was put into action once again at the infamous Second Battle of Geonosis, bringing her to the location where the Clone Wars began. Displaying incredible acts of selflessness, her and her fellow Padawan, Barasofi, were successful in destroying the droid factories, willing to give their own lives to do so, although thankfully that was not necessary. This was the beginning of a long and lasting friendship with Barris, which will be extremely important later in the video, and also in the Ahsoka series. Soon after the battle, Barris and Ahsoka were sent to the planet Dantooine with medical supplies, but Geonosian brainworms from the surface of the planet infected their crew and soon infected their entire ship, along with Barris Offi herself. Thankfully, Ahsoka found a way to eliminate the worms and save Barris's life yet again, strengthening the two's friendship, which Later on this will be very important, and it'll probably make you shed a tear. Following this, Ahsoka travelled to the planet Mandalore, marking her first visit to the home of the Mandalorian people. She was there to help educate young Mandalorians on law and public service, but she was also undercover hoping to root out corruption. Her students discovered a conspiracy to unseat the Duchess of Mandalore. Ahsoka put a stop to it and arrested the plot's leader, Prime Minister Ormek. This will be very important later on. Her actions cemented her as a hero to the people, something which will have large ramifications later on. Part 3, Practice Makes Perfect, Tales of the Jedi. As the Clone Wars drag on, Anakin begins to realise that things are only getting more and more dangerous on the battlefield. Because of this, Anakin makes it his mission to teach Ahsoka how to survive in the absolute worst of situations. Anakin orders Ahsoka to stand on a marked spot in the middle of a horde of her own clone troopers, and they all switch their blasters to stun before firing a barrage of shots at her, seeing if she can dodge them. She falls to the ground every single time, failing to get back up, failing to block their fire. This drags on over the course of the war until finally Ahsoka gets it many years later, later in the war. She learns to block every shot from her clones. Now keep this scene deep in your memory as it will become very relevant later in the video. Part 4, The Daughter of Mortis. Are you the one? 
Sometime after this, Anakin, Obi-Wan and Ahsoka find themselves on the mysterious Force planet of Mortis, which is a wellspring in the Force. A place where the energy of the Force converges and allows things that usually aren't permitted by the regular nature of the galaxy. Now here they come across a family simply known as the Ones, also known as the Mortis Gods. They represent the three aspects of the Force. The son represents the dark side, the daughter represents the light side, while the father represents the balance between the two. There is also the mother who represents chaos, but she isn't in this series, so we'll save that for another video. Because Anakin was the chosen one, the father of Mortis wanted him to become the new father of Mortis and govern the balance of the galaxy from that point onwards. Obviously, Anakin rejected this. While on the planet, each of the trio received revelations in the form of visions. Obi-Wan sees his master Qui-Gon Jinn as a force ghost for the first time because as we know from Revenge of the Sith, he didn't complete his training to manifest his body, only his voice. Here on Mortis, Obi-Wan can see the voice, because of the strength of the Force, in the Wellspring. Ahsoka sees a vision warning her of her future apprenticeship under Skywalker and that it will only bring pain. Anakin on the other hand sees an exact vision of everything that he will do during the final days of the Clone Wars, including pledging his allegiance to Palpatine and fighting Obi-Wan on Mustafar. Having seen this, Anakin immediately falls to the dark side and submits himself to the son of Mortis who promises him that he can help to fix this horrid future. Luckily though, the father of Mortis clears Anakin's memory, returning him back to the balance. But before they can leave Mortis, the son kidnaps Ahsoka. He then does something shocking by sapping the life essence out of her, literally killing her. Yes, Ahsoka actually died right here on Mortis. This is where things get crazy. Under the guidance of the father of Mortis, Anakin is able to transfer the essence of the daughter of Mortis via the purest form of the light side of the Force into Ahsoka's body, breathing new life into her. This also leaves Ahsoka with a permanent part of the daughter's spirit permanently within her. This is very, very important, so please keep this in mind for the rest of the video and going forward into the Ahsoka show. Part 5, The Wrong Jedi. This is the part of the video where things get really sad, especially if you're not a fan of innocent people being locked up. Now, after a massive attack on the Jedi Temple by an unknown assailant, Anakin and Ahsoka are called in to conduct investigations and interview suspects. After catching the primary suspect, Leda Termond, Ahsoka is left alone with her in her cell and during her interrogation, Leda begins unexplainably being force choked. On the CCTV footage, it appears that Ahsoka is the one doing the force choking because she is flailing her arms around wildly, wondering what is going on. On top of now being accused of killing this prisoner, Ahsoka is also framed for the original attack on the temple. This framing was done by none other than Barasofi, one of her best friends in the Order. During this whole time where Ahsoka was accused, Anakin stood by her, maintaining her innocence and relentlessly pursuing the truth about who was really behind the attack. Eventually, Anakin catches Barras, but it is too late. Ahsoka is expelled by the Jedi Order in a non-unanimous vote of the Jedi Council. It is believed that Obi-Wan and Plo Koon were among the only members who voted against her expulsion. Ahsoka was eventually cleared of any wrongdoing and Barriss Offee was dragged in front of Tarkin, who you will of course know from the movies, to face a Republic tribunal. Interestingly, she was actually escorted to the trial by the Grand Inquisitor, who is the Jedi Temple Guard here on the left. Now, after being cleared of these charges, Ahsoka is offered a position back in the Jedi Order and the rank of Jedi Knight to finally end her apprenticeship, with Yoda calling this whole situation her Great Jedi Trial. Understandably, Ahsoka's faith in the Order is completely shattered, so she turns and walks away. This completely breaks Anakin's heart into a million pieces as he loses the closest person to him in the entire Order. Anakin begs for her to stay, but she simply can't after what has been done to her. This is a pivotal moment for both Anakin and Ahsoka, more for each than each other know. Part 6, The Siege of Mandalore. Now here is where Ahsoka's arc really hits a crescendo. This is the absolute peak of the Clone Wars TV series and it's where hearts are shattered and tears will flow. After Ahsoka's leaving of the Jedi Order, she moved to the Coruscant underworld where she would have to make a new life for herself. Being down in the dark, lower levels of the planet, exposing herself as a Jedi was not smart. So instead, she turned to her other great talent, being a mechanic. No doubt taught to her by Anakin. After getting involved with some street urchins named Trace and Rafa Martez, if you know who they are, I'm sorry for your loss, Ahsoka finds herself on the Pike crime syndicate homeworld of Obadia. Here she hears chilling rumours that Maul is still alive and has taken control of Mandalore. It's at this point where Bo-Katan, Sabine's mother, Ursa Wren, and possibly the Armourer, although that's just a theory, show up and intercept Ahsoka begging for her help. At this point, Ahsoka returns to Mandalore and finally reunites with Anakin and Obi-Wan for the first time in a long time. Anakin gives Ahsoka back her lightsabers, having reattuned the kyber crystals to blue, matching Anakin's force alignment rather than hers, which readies her for the battle. Unfortunately though, while on their Venator, an emergency alarm is triggered with the news from Coruscant that Chancellor Palpatine has been kidnapped by General Grievous. 
This marks the beginning of the Battle of Coruscant and puts us squarely into Revenge of the Sith. Anakin and Obi-Wan are forced to return to Coruscant, leaving Ahsoka alone on Mandalore to fight off the threat of Maul with Bo-Katan's army. They expect to reunite shortly after Chancellor Palpatine is saved and Maul is captured. As you can probably guess, this is not to be. Ahsoka takes on Maul in one of the most ferocious lightsaber duels in the Clone Wars and he is finally captured. Ahsoka then loads her onto a Republic Venator and begins the escort back to Coruscant, where he is to be tried and likely executed for his crimes. This is where things start to take another turn in a chilling direction. Order 66 is called and Rex falls to his inhibitor chip, turning on Ahsoka with the rest of his men. Thankfully, using the training that Anakin gave her earlier, Ahsoka manages to deflect all of the fire against her and escape. She then helps Rex to remove his inhibitor chip and the two hide from the other troopers on board while still under Order 66. Now, Ahsoka lets Maul loose to help herself survive, but he goes ballistic and destroys the power core of the ship, sending it plummeting into an unknown ice moon. Rex and Ahsoka make a daring escape along with Maul, but painfully the ship impacts the icy moon and every single clone trooper that Ahsoka fought with during the Siege of Mandalore were killed on board. Ahsoka then buries her fallen clones along with her lightsabers and goes into hiding. Rex and Ahsoka then go their separate ways, with Rex meeting up with the other clones and Ahsoka fleeing deep into the Outer Rim. This marks the end of the Clone Wars. A long time after this event, Vader visits the site of the crash and finds Ahsoka's lightsabers as well as a clone trooper helmet. But interestingly, the spirit animal of the daughter of Mortis called Morai, who is an owl, is circling around. This indicates Ahsoka's presence at this site and Morai will go on to follow Ahsoka everywhere and have a deep connection to her, of course, because of the life essence of the daughter flowing within her. Part 7, Ahsoka in Exile. At this point, Ahsoka is in full fear of the newly formed Galactic Empire and believes that Anakin died in the siege on the Jedi Temple. She takes the fake name Ashla and resides in the Outer Rim farming moon of Rada, where she is given a job as a mechanic. Soon her force sensitivity is discovered and an inquisitor known as the Sixth Brother is dispatched to eliminate her. In an immense display of skill and power, Ahsoka kills the Sixth Brother with her bare hands by exploding his lightsabers and steals the two red kyber crystals. Using the light side of the force, Ahsoka then purifies these crystals and stops them from bleeding, turning them into white and puts them into her new hilts, granting her a new pair of white lightsabers. I'm sure you've seen these ones. It's at this point where Ahsoka is found and contacted by Bail Organa, a founding member of the early resistance against the Empire, and she is appointed as an undercover intelligence officer for the course. As part of this duty, she uses the codename Fulcrum, which she used back on Onderon with Saw Gerrera during the Clone Wars. This codename was later used by Cassian Andor. Part 8, The Spectres. As part of her fulcrum duties, she eventually meets up with a group of ragtag rebels known as the Spectres led by Order 66 survivor Kanan Jarrus and his new apprentice Ezra Bridger. Along with them are Sabine Wren and Hera Syndulla, oh and of course the most murderous and psychopathic droid in the galaxy, Chopper. Very important character. Soon after this, Ahsoka finally reunites with Captain Rex after all of these years, and not to mention this is the first time that we as a fanbase found out exactly what happened to Rex after the Clone Wars. Many who thought he took part in the siege on the Jedi Temple with Anakin. It is soon after this where Ahsoka is directed to Malachor by Master Yoda alongside Kane and Jarrus and Ezra Bridger. Here, Ahsoka finally reunites with Maul, who appears to have been stranded on Malachor after his ship crashed here seemingly right after the Siege of Mandalore. Ahsoka actually teams up with her old foe to defeat the Inquisitors who also tracked them to Malachor, but then something shocking happens. Darth Vader himself shows up. This sets up the showdown of the galaxy with Ahsoka finally facing down her old master. A master who believed that she was dead all of this time. The two draw it out in the twilight of the apprentice showdown and Ahsoka cracks Vader's mask, revealing Anakin underneath. This shatters her, leading her to declare that she won't leave his side like she did back at the temple all of those years ago. At this point, Anakin turns back to Vader and kills Ahsoka on the spot. Or so we think. This is where the world between worlds comes in. When the season originally came out, season 2 of Rebels, everyone thought that Ahsoka was either dead or something mysterious happened to her in the Force. But later on in season 4 of Rebels, Ezra Bridger finds a mural with the gods of Mortis on it and manages to unlock the portal to a place outside of space and time called the World Between Worlds. Here he can affect the past and the future. Viewing Ahsoka about to die through a portal, Ahsoka pulls her out before Vader can strike her down, therefore saving her life and altering time forever. Another insane nod. As the result of this, however, Ahsoka believes that her interacting with anything major in the galaxy will destroy the timeline. This is the reason why she is not present during the original trilogy. That is, until 
Part 9, The Mandalorian. Now, at the end of Star Wars Rebels, while Ahsoka is away in hiding, Thrawn decides to lay siege to Ezra Bridge's homeworld of Lothal. In an act of shocking self-sacrifice, Ezra uses the Force to summon a species of Force-sensitive whales named Pergil to capture all of Thrawn's fleet and Thrawn himself, with Ezra also on board. He then directs the Purgle to blast off into hyperspace, taking both Ezra and Thrawn into the unknown regions, never to be found again. That is, if Ahsoka can't help it. And before this amazing feat, Ezra tells Sabine Wren to promise that she will come looking for him. This leads us to that fateful episode of The Mandalorian Season 2 called The Jedi. Ahsoka is on a forest world called Corvus attempting to hunt down and get information from the Night Sister known as Morgan Elspeth, one of the last survivors of General Grievous's massacre of the Night Sisters during the Clone Wars. Elspeth is building ships for Thrawn on Corvus, and Ahsoka eventually defeats her in a duel where she demands to know where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? And then after this, Ahsoka visits Sabine Wren on Lothal in her Ahsoka the White costume and they prepare to leave for Ezra. I'll get into Ahsoka the White in the next video so make sure you subscribe for that. It's a journey which they admit has been waited on for too long. And this is where the Ahsoka series starts. I hope you guys are hyped for the series. Make sure you check out every single known Inquisitor in the next video on screen now to find out more about the series. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much guys if you made it this far.